And at the moment, out there, the basic two types are a sealed system and an open vented system. So I'm going to talk you through the open vented system first, and we'll ask questions at the end, and then I'll talk you through the sealed system. On the open vented system, basically what's happening is we're coming to a situation now where oil and gas is being priced out of the market is one problem, but availability is going to be a more serious problem. So the money might not be the problem, it's the availability. So they're going to come in with this, what was before used, is, uh, solid fuels. So when you're burning solid fuels, i.e. coal, logs, turf, anthracite, whatever, you have to use an open vented system. There's no other way out of it. On the open vented system, basically what happens is you must have a gravity circulation. So what gravity means is when somebody lights this fire, the heat has to be able to get away safely. Nothing aiding it. So you can't depend on a pump or you can't depend on electrics because with solid fuel, if somebody keeps putting on the material, the raw material, it will just keep taking it. So until someone says stop. So what they have to build in with the open vented system is a gravity circuit. On the gravity circuit, that means that there's pipes coming off the boiler and they have to rise. Now where they rise to comes down to the design of the job. We can go into that in greater detail. But I'm just going to give you the overview of what, what we're going to get into deep, deeper into. Rising meaning the boiler is situated at a lower level and above that is your cylinder or some radiators. doesn't necessarily have to be the cylinder but usually they'll pick the cylinder because it is a way of getting rid of the heat. If you cannot get to the cylinder by gravity they may pick a radiator or you might hear them calling it in the trade a heat leak rad. As it suggests it's a leak for this hot water to get away. So on the open vented system Usually, there's a primary flow and a primary return going to look after this heat leak. And on the other side, which would be the radiators, possibly it's where the pump is going to be put. On the open vented system, as I said, the minimum size piping you should use for the heat leak or the primary flow and return is 25 mil or 1 inch. When you're dealing with gravity, the secret with gravity is the larger the pipe, the better. It has to rise, we've said that, but the larger the diameter, so you'd never use anything smaller than one inch because it wouldn't move quick enough for you. And you'd start getting a noise and a bang in the system that would cause people to say, what's going on here? If you don't use this gravity circulation, which it's absolutely suicide not to, but if someone that hadn't served their time in the proper manner, or DIY specialists that we're getting now, they buy some of these booklets and they think it's go from page one to ten and you can do it. But the downside of it is, as I said, if you don't know what you're doing, you could blow someone up. That's the bottom line on it. Solid fuel, as I say, is dangerous if it's not put in professionally and properly. So with the open vented system, as I said, with this gravity circuit, people can light a fire. If there was a power failure in the house, pumps don't come on, stats don't work, there's not a problem. You have overcome it by putting in where the water can move to. Okay, the radiators might not heat because the power failure has not let the pump come in, or the pump might have packed up. My rule of thumb with a circulating pump is it's like a light bulb. The manufacturer will guarantee it for 12 months. After that, they can go. You could get 20 years out of a circulating pump, or you could get two years. As I say, it's hard to know sometimes what causes them to go, but that's the way it works. So, as I say, with the solid fuel or with the open vented system, the water can move away on its own, trouble free. So, if somebody is there for 10 hours and just keeps putting on fuel, that water will go up through your coil, heat the water around indirectly, as we went through in T2. And then if there was a problem and someone keeps putting on the fuel, you have an open expansion. So open expansion meaning that you have created too much heat, more than enough to heat the water, but they build in another safety that it'll rise up to your 10 gallon tank and pitch over in through the expansion. So in system, things change. You could be oil or gas. It cannot be solid fuel as I said to you. 
The seal system is automatically controlled. So in saying that, it's all down to electrics. So you have a boiler, an oil boiler or a gas boiler. There's built-in thermostats on it. There's built-in safety devices. There's high limit stats, there's low limit stats. So they've belt and braced everything that could cause a problem. If your electricity goes out for whatever reason, your boiler won't fire. In the trade, we use the term fire mean light. So if there's a power failure, nothing will happen. When the system is up and running, you have a lot of control. You have a thermostat on the boiler. Your choice. You could have it set from 50, 60, 70. The higher you go up, the hotter the rods and the water gets, the more juice you're burning. So as I say, in the winter time you might find people hiring them up. In the warmer weather you might find them turning down the stat. That's where that's coming from there. On the sealed system, you eliminate this expansion tank. And you eliminate, as I say, you can put the boiler anywhere in the system because you can drop so I've said to you on the previous slide, in the open vented system, are you using solid fuel, you had to rise. So the boiler was positioned in a spot and you had to go that way with your pipe work. In the sealed system, you can put the boiler at any level. So you could put the boiler up on the roof if you so wished. On solid fuel you couldn't because you'd have nothing higher than that to fill it. But in the sealed system, it has become the most popular system because oil and gas are the big sellers at the moment. I think 95% of the heating systems going in in Dublin at the moment are natural gas. So that's why this has taken over. But if you ask your parents what they would have used in the 70s, you might find they had an open system of a back boiler solid fuel. I'll talk to you about the advantages and disadvantages at, at the end of it. On the sealed system, what they're doing is they're replacing this little 10 gallon tank in a lot of cases with a pressure vessel. So what's happening is when water expands, it has to go somewhere. So it expands inside that vessel. It may be beside the boiler, or a lot of the new boilers coming in now, the gas boilers, they're putting the vessel into the boiler that you mightn't even notice. Because when you buy the boiler, it's like just a white casing and being hung on the wall. But you'll find at the back of the boiler that there's some modification or shape. The old traditional pressure vessel was round, but that's gone out of fashion now the boiler manufacturers are making them the shape to suit the boiler so as I say you might just have to look in a little bit closer at your boiler to see where it is what happens is then when the water heats rather than going up through this expansion pipe I talked about and into an expansion tank if necessary it goes into this membrane inside this pressure vessel or it's like we say a diaphragm and it pushes in with expansion and when the system is turned off and cools down, the ball just goes back to its normal shape. So the ball is filled with air, for the want of a better word. And so it's expansion and contraction, so long as the system is on or off. On the sealed system also, it has the advantages of you don't have the problems with airlocks that you would have with the open vented system. They're filling some of these systems on the sealed system off the rising main, or they're filling them from your 60 gallon domestics tank up in the attic. So you have huge amounts of water. And that's the secret, that's the big plus. One of the big pluses with it. You can fill the systems in minutes. On the open vented system, you're depending on this header tank, which hasn't got a lot of head height, because it's usually placed as high as you can in your loft or your attics. So you're governed by the amount of water in it, number one, and then you're governed by the head height, number two. So it can be tricky trying to fill them, or it can be tricky when you empty them, trying to refill them. You might find filling it from brand new isn't as big a problem, but if a man comes back to do alterations, or comes back to do modifications or whatever, and drains down, filling up can be a problem with the open vent system. On the sealed system, as I said it to you, it also has the advantages that you don't have to go near your attic with pipe work. You can actually put in your system oil or gas and you don't have to get into the attic or your loft of your house. I'll use your houses because I presume you all live in some form of house or apartment so it might be easier to visualise what's happening in your own domestic situations. So like I said, that is a big plus with this. You're eliminating having to get into your attics, you're eliminating pipework having to go up there, you're eliminating pipework being frozen or having to be very well insulated. There's a cost saving also 
on the sales system when you take into consideration all these things you don't have to do that you would have to do with the open vented system. On the sales system, like I said to you, you cannot use it on solid fuel. They just won't allow it. You have to have an open expansion. As I say, that is ultra important to remember for yourselves. You, ca you cannot use an open vented system. Uh, uh, so you can only use the open vented system when you're using it. You have to use it on, on, on the solid fuel. On the oil or the gas, you can use the sealed system. I'll just go back to the open vented system that we started out with. Now, gravity circulation I spoke about. The circuits, so you have a primary flow, primary return, minimum 25 mil diameter pipework going from your boiler to your coil. You can take the radiators off on another circuit or you can take them off on that circuit. I won't get into that at the moment because you're bringing in pipe sizing and you're bringing in pumps and you're bringing in directions of flows and the directions of returns. So basically then, moving then along to the advantages, uh, sorry, disadvantages and advantages. Well, the disadvantage with the open vented system is there's a, lot of, there's a certain amount of pipe work in your attic. So if there's a certain amount of, you have to have access to the attic. So whether it be a ladder as arrangement there or whatever, a stairs. If people are converting their attic, you have to leave a section or a portion that this can be got at. So with the way things are going now, every ounce of space is being taken up. So a lot of people are converting attics. So they have to leave an area where this can be got at, maintained and serviced. The other thing on it is, on the open vented system is, like I said, you must use a minimum of inch pipe. Pipe has gone very expensive. So like that, on the sealed system, they're getting away with using smaller pipe works. Some of them are using three quarter, where on the open vented, you must use a minimum of 25 mil, which is inch. So it becomes a cost factor. Also then, coming down to the advantages of it, the advantages of the open system being well, you could have an oil boiler, or a gas boiler, or a solid fuel boiler. You could have any of the boilers working off the open vented system. So it is an advantage. Likewise, one of the advantages with it is, if you have access to coal or turf or logs at a reasonable price, they reckon it is going to be the cheapest way of fuel. I don't know, time will tell. Mainly, as I said, the sales system would have the advantages over the open vented system. Other than that, I'll move on to the seal because, as I say, they are the ones that have the pluses. So we'll just go back to the seal system here. Advantages, like I said it here, you can put the boiler anywhere in the system. You're not going to run into trouble filling it up because you have either a 60-gallon tank of water or they're filling it off the main. If you're filling it off the main, you have to get involved with the local authorities' rules and regulations. It's becoming a problem. Look at Galway at the moment. There's murder going on with the water for the last three years. It was caused by bad workmanship, I would put some of it down to. Okay, I don't know the finer details of it, but at the moment now the pipes are full of, the water is full of lead. Now they're saying it's gone into the cast iron main, so it's a big problem, big problem. So as I said to you, if you're filling these off the rising main, there are rules and regulations. I won't go into them at the moment because I want to get you to take them down and I want to specify how serious and how dangerous it is if water from your heating systems get back into your drinking water. It's serious problems. As I say, the advantages, less pipe work. Boiler can be put anywhere in the installation. Quicker heating up period. Quicker filling. So, you see the advantages of it. Disadvantages, it can't be used with solid fuel. So, if you're deciding to go from oil and you're the sealed system to solid fuel, you have to re a new arrangement. You'll have to put in an expansion tank. You'll have to put in all the pipe work I talked about there. So basically that's in a nutshell where we're coming from. We'll take it on board in, de in great detail and I'll talk you through any... By the way, has anyone any questions on what I've asked you about and what I've spoken about? Yeah, sometimes when we go to the house, the filler loops are still connected. Head on, I presume you've inherited this problem. So your company hasn't done the previous work there because they know what they should have done. But basically you go in, you do your repair work, you fill up your system to the pressure that's required, and then you disconnect and leave it in that way. Domestic central heating system, what's the safety valve, sir? The preset from the manufacturers are three bar. Three bar. <laughs>